The latest statistics show over 900,000 abortions were performed in the United States in one year alone. With every abortion, there is a huge loss, a loss that many of those post-abortive mothers and fathers eventually begin to feel. For those experiencing that grief after an abortion, you should know there is hope. It's a hope we highlight in this week's Pro-Life Focus. There's an unfortunate notion out there that the Catholic Church condemns not only the act of abortion, but the individual, and that is just not true. Many individuals who choose to abort a baby experience unresolved grief and guilt, which can carry major consequences. Women who have aborted have an 81% higher risk of subsequent mental health problems compared to other women, are 138% more likely to have mental health problems than women who have given birth. And post-abortive mothers have higher rates of anxiety, depression, alcohol use and misuse, marijuana use, and suicidal behavior. The Lord Jesus came to heal us, to forgive our sins, you know, the divine physician. Mary McCluskey wants post-abortive mothers and anyone else impacted by abortion to know they are not alone and there is help. She works on Project Rachel Ministry for the U.S. Bishops Conference. A post-abortion healing ministry, Project Rachel is open to anyone of any faith experiencing emotional or spiritual pain after an abortion. Specially trained priests, a ministry team, and therapists offer such healing opportunities as, you know, of course, the priest, confession, but also spiritual guidance. Uh, there are referrals to therapists. Many dioceses offer retreats, either weekend or day models, um, or uh, support groups that meet monthly or weekly for a, a, an ex a, a specific amount of time. McCluskey emphasizes the ministry integrates both spiritual and psychological dimensions. Priests will talk about you know, women coming to uh, confession multiple times to confess the same sin again and again and again. That's where uh, the trainings that we do and uh, really educate priests and others, the ministry teams in the diocese, about sometimes the need for, uh, typically the need for, to integrate in the psychological approach as well. I knew beforehand that God forgave me, but forgiving myself was one of the hardest things because I regret that decision every single day. Teresa Hessler was a top advertising executive in Maryland when she found herself at a low point in May of 2015. She was running her own business, newly divorced, and discovered she was pregnant. I was feeling hopeless and scared, scared of judgment, scared of failure again, scared of being ostracized, loss of job, loss of relationship, uh, tons of different emotions. At, and I panicked and went and processed it almost like a business decision and it's very much not. And so I decided to have my abortion in hopes that I could just make it go away. Immediately feeling grief, Hessler turned to the internet and discovered Project Rachel. Because of the sensitive nature of abortion, Project Rachel is confidential and holds high privacy standards. No one in your parish or local church community will know if you're involved. But Hessler, on her own, wanted to come forward to share her experience with the ministry. The groups were intimate, and I, I was amongst peers that were dealing with the same pain and grief that I was. And we were in that journey together, so knowing that I wasn't alone and to learn how to forgive ourselves and knowing that God forgives us was was amazing. For Hessler, much of the healing came swiftly. Just two years after first coming to Project Rachel, Hessler is now a pro-life lobbyist and serves as the Director of Administration and Legislation for Maryland Right to Life. It's a really beautiful thing to see how God has changed my life for the better and to honor him and my daughter and to really do his work on a daily basis and to show that pro-life isn't this in the box definition and it's not people that are filled with hatred and judgment and it's really all about compassion and open arms and love and showing others that they're not alone whether it's when they find themselves scared and pregnant or when they find themselves grieving the choice of an abortion. Hessler's witness is a reminder there is always hope 
there are people that care and they might be a complete stranger at the time, but they're, they're out there. And hope does not disappoint. We want to reiterate confidentiality is a huge priority for Project Rachel. If you reach out to them, your parish or local church community members will not know. There are very high privacy standards, be assured of that. And if you do want to reach out to Project Rachel, simply go to hopeafterabortion.org.